welcome to another episode of Grey Magnolias. My name is Alma and this episode is going to be about what I read in March. As I've mentioned several times that my reading has just been terrible. Ever since I finished reading A Soul to Touch by Opal, um, it just put me in the biggest book hangover. I've had a couple good reads. I read, f I finished five books in March, including A Soul to Touch. And I don't know, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I just, before, I mean, you know, years previous where I, like, I was reading like crazy, I just get into like, I just jump into the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And I was just like, I finish either a really good book or a decent book and I don't know what to get into and so I most definitely am a mood reader um I'm in my son's bedroom because and it's freezing in here so yeah let's and then I'll also be sharing what I am going to be finishing up in the next few days as well so okay first up I will start off with a soul to touch by Opal. I'm saying her last name wrong. I said it wrong. I think the whole read along video that I did. Um, you can go watch that. I'll link it down below. Um, I'll, it's more in depth of like reactions and stuff like that. It was a really fun video to make, but I gave it infinite stars, five out of five. Like it was just perfect. I love her writing. It's so like, her books are about like 500 pages long and they just don't feel like it. It's just never long enough. And then, ugh. It was so good. I love the characters. It's my favorite book in the series so far. Um, I love Kitty. I love um, Mayumi. Just, I think that's how you say, I think that's her name. But it was just excellent. Excellent. I finished Black Ties and White Lies by Kate Singleton. And when I wrote it down I'm, and I posted it on my Instagram, I gave it four stars, but I'm actually giving it, going to give it three stars. I'll be putting in pictures like here. Um, of each book that I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, like this was a billionaire romance fake dating um, trope and he buys, it's, I think it's um, Beck or Blake, one of those. He falls in love with her first years ago and he was, she was dating his brother and his brother was like a piece of crap. And he tried traditionally contacting her but she didn't want anything to do with that family anymore. So he buys the company she works at in marketing and he makes her be his secretary and like proposes the fake dating thing and like because he's like a, a rogue rake type of thing. So it was really good. It was hot. It was like just one of those like if you really focus and see the details it's not that good but it was really good for me at the moment. Um, and I don't really care for the fake dating thing because it's just like so when they start falling in love and they're like, oh no, but it's still fake. None of this means anything. It just gets like really annoying. <laughs> in my opinion, it just like annoys me. Um, and then there was a third act conflict. Like at the very, uh, no, we should just put that to rest, third act conflicts. Because it's just like, come on, like, like there's only 30 pages left. Let it be good, hot, and just more like swoony things. Not, he had finally was like, I love you. And I want this to be real. Can you be my girlfriend? Because we're already engaged and stuff like that. And she still doubted it. That just that drives me bonkers. Drives me bonkers. And then when I was reading the reviews on Goodread, which I try not to do, um, I only read when I pick a book. I try to only read the first three visible reviews on Amazon to like, you know, if they're all bad, then I'm like, okay, it might be bad for me. <laughs> um, but when I was looking at the, I was writing down my my little notes. Oh my god, the reviews are so bad. Everyone was like, DNF this, the female main character can jump over. She was a, she was annoying, I'm not gonna lie. I really enjoyed him, her not so much. Um, and then someone, I only saw one, but they accused this author of plagiarism of this other book. I have not heard that. I, um, I haven't heard of that other book. I didn't read that other book, so I'm not so sure how certain that is. Like if it's actually plagiarism or if it's just too similar because I mean I don't know with romance there's a lot of like the same themes and just kind of like if it's X then it has to have Y, Z, and W in it to like make it part of that trope and plot you know so I don't know how plagiarized it actually was and then um, a lot of a lot of the 
Pun Star DNF reviews were like, this is just like every book talk trope thing just smashed into one. And maybe, maybe yes, it was. Oh, and now that I'm remembering, I was really disappointed. Like, so, you know, they're like back and forth and like fighting this feeling. And she's like, no, they just live together and then they're just spending time together. And then they get stuck in the snowstorm. It's one bed type of thing. And he's just been like trying to resist. And the schmutz scene, or like the finally they give in to each other, it's like four chapters long, okay, of just debauchery. And it was really good. It was really good. And then after that, you got nothing else. Like, it was almost fade to black moments. Not like, I mean, you got, you know, you were in there and it happened and then it just kind of like, you didn't want there for the end. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's tinkering between 2.5 star to 3 star. Like, it was a fun read. I had fun reading it until I got frustrated. And then I started noticing, I'm like, are we not going to get, sorry, I'm kind of, I'm only stepping in the morning. Are we not going to get another, like, moment <laughs> where it's over? So I read this after reading A Soul to Touch because I was like, so slumpy. Um, it's called Hold by um, Zanny Adams and Claire Kent. It's a series. It is a, I would put it in the category of science fiction fantasy romance. So it's it was a quick novella. It was like a two hour read. My friend recommended it to me. So you have what's her name? You have Rianne. She so like the world's been invaded by aliens and they don't really describe it's like an alien race, but I get the vibe that they're still human. They didn't really describe them yet, um, since it was the first book in this series. And she, they have planets that are prisons, which are called holds. Um, for humans and no matter what you do if it's like stole a piece of candy to murder or adultery and stuff like that you go to prison for the rest of your life like in this prison's underwater and the water that's on this planet humans can't tolerate they would die I don't know because of the saltiness or whatever but um so she gets sent there and the prison guards like hey find the strongest man and give yourself to him that's the only way you're gonna be able to survive so she picks the silent broody cane and it's just kind of like um just their journey of you know she's dependent on him and she gives herself to him sexually but then it becomes more obviously and but he's like a man of very few words for quite some time it's single point of view i really like the writing style i felt like i was there and i needed a shower because like you know there's no water they don't bathe it's like a prison they have to food gets set down and they have to like fight for it it was it was really good and i will most definitely continue on and read the rest of the series here and there next i read poison study by maria v schneider and i am dipping my toes back into ya um, maybe out of desperation of like nothing else is piquing my interest but um sarah j mass announced this this is the process of why i started reading this um sarah j mass announced this third book of the crescent city or whatever the heck that's called um, I've never read Sarah J. Mass. I don't think I ever will. I don't care for extremely overhyped series. I know that's like really stupid and I'm sure I've missed out on a million good books, which I'm sure I'll read at some point, but I like, you know, you know, like not that crazy overhyped because then you run into a bunch of spoilers and stuff like that and I don't like that. Anywho, so I was reading the reviews for, um, A Throne of Glass. I think that's the first one in that series. And a lot of the reviews were like, you know, this female main character is not that strong, blah, 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 blah. Um, if you really want something, like, similar um, to read Poison Study. And I was like, hey, you know what, like, let me check that out. I didn't read much of it. I feel like I do better if I go in as blind as I possibly can. And I found it at my local library. I requested it, and I got it in the physical form, and I really enjoyed it. it the, the writing was really good i really like the female character yay oh my god i'm like this one yelena yelena um and everything she went through and just her kind of like you know discovering who she was and overcoming the trauma that she went through and stuff like that i didn't really feel the connection to the love interest val um, valik valik who is the one who's teaching her and trains her in the art of poison so this is like she's a food taster she gets a choice of either being hung for her crime because she was in jail or becoming a food taster for the commander when she chooses to be a food taster and then she has to be trained in poison study which hence the title and then she's always like either she's gonna die of poison 
of being poisoned, right? Like every day could be her last day or someone's trying to kill her. So it was really action packed. I love, like, she was a very strong female character for sure. And then I forgot, I didn't read too much YA when I was younger. I was already reading very mature things um, by the time I was 12, 13, whenever I could get my hands on, which might explain a lot about myself. But anywho, I forgot that with YA, or even I think maybe it's just a fantasy thing. I haven't read too much fantasy, but it's something that I've noticed that so much happens in the last four chapters. Like, it's just kind of like story and a little bit of world building throughout, and then it's just like, boom. And then when like they hooked up, I mean, I kind of, in the reviews, I like checked for a second. I saw that um, she was gonna get together with uh, Valak. Valak, yeah, I think that's how you say it. And I was just like, oh. Okay, and not that I didn't like his character, I just didn't feel that chemistry, but since it's a YA, I, you know, that's, I, the romance is obviously, like, a last thing. It's more of the character development, the found family type of thing, and the, the journey, the fighting, the fantasy, blah, blah, blah. So, but I enjoyed it. I, I think I gave it a three star. Like, it wasn't mind-blowingly good. It did make me want to pick it up to see what was going to happen next, because I was reading about one or two chapters a day, because reading physical books with a toddler is just impossible as you know as if you might know <laughs> if you have children so and I picked up book two and three and there's also um like I don't know what you would call it like half books in between book one and two of Valak's perspective and I really wish I could get my hands on that because I love I love dual point of view it just makes any story except um what was it oh my god Fairy Dale by Veronica Lassant, I think that's her, that's the author's name. That was in single point of view and it was exquisite. It was like so well done. Um, but yeah, that was that and I, I quite enjoyed it. So I think I'm venturing slowly into maybe the things I missed out as a child because I was reading other things. <laughs> and lastly, I finally finished um, Desperately Seeking a Duke. Oh my god, I forgot. Celeste Bradley, I think. I didn't write down the author's name in my notes but i started that in september of 2022 and i finally finished it marched 2023 and it was really good i'm pretty sure if i were to have read it read it in one sitting and not like freaking like four months i would have rated it higher to like get that full enjoyment um i tabbed the hell out of it as i've shown multiple times um I really liked Phoebe's character and Rafe's who's uh Phoebe is like a simple country girl but she has this inheritance that she could possibly gain if she were to marry a duke and it's all upon her and she's out for her first season and they meet like a you know in the night type of thing at the ball and they instantly like you know instant love flames and stuff like that and Reef is about to like, hey, I'm gonna marry this chick, like, what the heck? But then his brother's like, oh, I'm gonna pick her. And it's like this whole thing, and like the, they're fighting this pool, and he wants to leave and go start his own life, and just can't stand the fact that he to be in that house, and um, his brother marrying the love of his life, all this stuff, and she's hilarious, I really liked her. Um, she's got a naughty mind, because she, when she first saw him at the ball, she was like, oh my god, his butt is huge. <laughs> I was like, I love that. Um, so yeah, it was really good. I, I think I gave it a 3, 3.5. But then when I finally got to the end, it just felt really rushed. And then that third act conflict, or yeah, it was pretty much the third act conflict, which was, it was the very end. It was just very rushed and very, it took too long to resolve. And then the last of it was just rushed. And I don't know. I do want to read the second one because I think it'll be really good. It involves the Duke and another cousin in this whole because it's the first series of the Harris heiress bride. So, so yeah, that concludes everything I read for March. What I'm glad to finish for the beginning of April. It's April. Oh shoot, I dropped my pen. So, um. So I, this is from my last thrift haul that I picked up. I found it very interesting, so I kind of went right into it and I'm almost finished. It's been a slow read. I mean, these chapters are like 15 pages long. They're quite long for 
I don't know, how long should a chapter be? But it's um, Cry Wolf. Sorry, my morning sniffles are coming in. By Tammy Hogue. Um, she, this is a romance suspense mystery. And it has, I've never seen a set back, like, set step back like this. It's very 80s. Get a good look at him. Um, so the back reads, No one heard her cry for help. All attorney Laurel Chandler wanted was a place to hide to escape the painful memories of a case that had destroyed her career, her marriage, and nearly her life. But coming home to the peaceful tree-lined streets of her whole old hometown won't give Laurel the scenery she craves. For in a slurry heat of Louisiana summer, she finds herself pursued by a gorgeous stranger who carefully smile hides a private torment, and by a murderer who enjoys the hunt as much as the kill. And then, and then it goes to the next part. I don't know why they, that's kind of like weird, but except the man who wants her dead. With his sexy southern drawl and brazen bedroom eyes, best-selling horror writer Jack Bardou, I don't know how to say that, it's French, um, has seduced half a woman in Bayou Bur Baruch's, I don't know how to say that either, I'm sorry, I'm terrible, um, without even trying. And now the notorious bad boy has turned his easy Cajun charm on Laurel. But even as she responds to Jack's reckless passions, a serial killer who's terrorizing the slurry southern town commits a fourth brutal murder. Brutal murder. And suddenly Laurel knows that in the face of temptation, she must keep her head to track down the ruthless killer who may have already won her heart. So, so, okay. <laughs> See, that last part makes me think it's Jack. But I don't think it's Jack. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> Cause I read that and I was like, oh, she falls in love with the killer. But then it's just like, I don't think it's him. I'm not, I love murder mystery shows, but I'm terrible at guessing who it is. So, um, so it really got interesting at like this much, but all of this is kind of not nothing. I mean, it's building up the story and stuff like that, but there's a lot of trauma. So, I mean, trigger warning, if anybody gets their hands on this one, um, every character has extreme trauma so you have laurel's perspective you have jack's perspective you have laurel's sisters um savannah's perspective which she poor thing is loca and um she went through a lot as a child and um yeah it's really good i don't sorry i'm like blanking out i need coffee or something so I really am enjoying it. I would give it, so the writing is very lyrical. I feel like I'm there in Louisiana. I feel the heat and like the, when she describes the bayou, like I feel like I can smell it too. I really like her writing. It's really given me the perspective of being more descriptive. I think it especially would help with those people that have the mind blindness. My husband actually has that, which I feel so bad for him. <laughs> I have to talk slowly or he if I'm describing him something he's because he's like I don't know what you're talking about um but it really feels like I'm there uh there I'm trying not to focus because when I focus on the repetition it really puts me off and like makes me roll my eyes a lot there is a lot of repetition in here but at the same time it's like still really good like it's really gripping and just like oh my god is it this is it him and really good oh my god this book i had to return it now i have to wait to get it back which kills me but that was my fault um the other book that i'm going to finish listening to is um one good earl deserves a lover by sarah mclean <sighs> you guys <laughs> this reminded me why i love historical romance i mean like that's what i first started reading as a child pretty much i was a child um that is like that was my gateway right and then now as i've gotten older i've gotten into you know like dark romance monster romance paranormal oh no paranormal i think was my second you know vampire stuff or whatever but this book sweet jesus it is wild it is not, i mean not wild but it is so <sighs> scrumptious like oh my i don't even know how to where do i begin so um our female main character pippa she is um, she's weird, you know, she's very, like, she's book smart, she's very, like, 
technical and she's really into botany and bones and stuff like that and she's about to get married to someone else but she's like well i want to be able to take care of my husband in the bedroom and like i just want to know what the heck to expect because you know this is obviously set in a time where women don't talk amongst themselves about that or the all they tell their daughters are like it might hurt a little bit but just take it like type of thing horrible i know not too far from now <laughs> You learn stuff on your own still these days. And so she finds and picks the, like, the man of the street. Like, he is known for just his superb ways in the, in the bedroom, Mr. Cross. And he is the owner of a gaming hell, um, one of the best gaming hells in all of England or whatever. So she goes to him and proposes him to be his test to be, you know, to... Do an experiment on to learn about cunnilingus and, and all this stuff and he's just like what <laughs> and he's just so taken by her and just her quirkiness her like bluntness her smarts and her spectacles and oh my god and he's like denying like no i'm not gonna teach you like uh, so good so Oh good. So I listened so chapter eleven, which I'm gonna listen to again when I get that shit back. I was this is a confession. Lord please forgive me, but I was listening to this at the park while I was swinging my son in the swing. And I was it was in my headset, like okay, come on. And I could barely I could barely contain myself. I was like, oh god. It was so good. It was so good. I think it's just the fact that, like, in historical romance, if you get kissed, you're, like, ruined. You're, like, a slut. You know? That's what they think. Like, oh, no one will want you. You're, you've been deflowered. And it's just like, I just got kissed. Like, no. You know? Or, like, you get caught alone with a man, then you're, like, you have to marry him type of thing. So, and so everything just seems, <laughs> sorry, I'm like, am I five? Not five. Am I, like, you know super mature um it's just so good so good i can't wait to get it back i followed this chick on instagram and that was a constant reread for her um when she would do stuff because she was like renovating her house her like farmhouse or whatever and i was like i have to read that and i have read books of of sarah mclean she's excellent for sure um she wrote I forget what it's called but it's the bare knuckle bastard series it's the second one i think it was chapter 11 too now that i think about it or chapter 10 and i was listening to it and oh my word this one thing that i was like i was like i think this is the hottest thing i've ever freaking listened to but and and i'm sorry i'm all over the place but it was it's so good. I'm not even done with it, and it's like a 10 out of 10. Because, and Mr. Cross, my god, he's like moved up there for my book boyfriends or whatever. Most definitely. Most definitely. He is, every time he says Pippa, like he's like, Pippa. I want my name to be Pippa. <sighs> Calm down a little, little bit. I got myself too flustered with that one. But yeah, that concludes what I finished for March, what I'm currently reading, and I have a slew of books that I want to read. Maybe not for like April per se, there is one book. I am reading that. Oh my god, I'm so excited. That's coming out April 13th now. I thought it was coming out much later in April. I thought it was coming out like the 20s, but it's coming out um, April 13th and... I'm gonna read the first book again and then I'm gonna read that one and I will be ruined yet again probably not know what to read um so yeah I hope you enjoyed I will link or like make a list of everything down below that I read there will also be as you've seen pictures throughout the uh, video and I'll list all my socials and stuff like that um, let me know what you read for March um, if you had a good reading month or if you're super slumpy and a mood reader and can't get into anything but yeah see you in the next one bye <laughs>